What in the world is an entomologist like me, George Brossard, looking for among the old sets of the Warsazat Film Studios in Morocco? The backdrop for such famous movies as Lawrence of Arabia and Gladiator. I'm looking for the star of our show. I'm not looking for Peter O'Toole or Russell Crowe, but for a more dangerous character that has the respect of all who know him. When this merciless predator attacks, he has the sting of a jet fighter. As with many other film stars, people either love him or hate him. Here's our star, the Scorpion. The Scorpion's ancestors were almost three feet long, with gills that allowed them to breathe underwater. With their jointed legs, they became the first invertebrates to venture onto dry land over 450 million years ago. Today's scorpions look almost exactly like their distant ancestors, except that they are much smaller. Of course, as land creatures, they no longer need their gills. Scorpions are not insects. With their cousins, the spiders, they form a separate category of animals, the arachnids. Surprisingly, it's in the vast arid parts of the world that we find the greatest variety of scorpions. There are over 1,400 species of scorpions divided into nine main families. To learn more about this ancient and venerable creature, the feats it can perform, and its amazing ability to adapt, we are going to the heart of the world's largest desert, the Sahara. For hundreds of years, countless travelers have passed like this through the gates of the Miamid Kasbah before setting out in the Moroccan desert. This is where you find your provisions, good camels, and experienced camel drivers. But if you were interested in scorpions, you only need one name, Mr. Abdul. Assalamu alaikum, Samala alaikum. Monsieur Abdul? Abdul? This man is highly respected in the community. He is a guide, a healer, and a scorpion charmer. He is intrigued by my plans for a hunting expedition. This must be the first time a tourist has asked to visit places crawling with scorpions. Finally, we embark on our scorpion hunt. Around us is an almost hallucinatory landscape, the Erds, or Great Sand Dunes. Unfortunately for our little caravan, the Chargui is blowing. Every spring, this powerful wind blows down from the continent, raising sandstorms that can last for days at a time. There's no way we can see scorpions under these conditions. Scorpions hate the wind. The slightest breeze interferes with their incredibly precise detection systems.
scorpions that live in the dunes, on the other hand, are well equipped for walking in sand. Their legs end in long claws and are covered with airs that increase traction and prevent them from sinking into the sand. Humans are not nearly as well equipped for walking in sand. We sink and slip at every step and the going is pretty rough. Mr. Abdul urges me on. Just a few more dunes and we will find shelter. I can't wait to breed something besides dust. Atlas, this is the base camp of our expedition. A big Tuareg tent set up amid the dunes. Our camels have worked hard, and I am relieved that they can now have a rest. They deserve it. Abdul wastes no time. His first hack is to place a metal amulet at the entrance to our tent to protect us from scorpions. It is important to place the scorpion with its head facing up. Otherwise, there is no guarantee it will work. When conditions improve, scorpions come out of their burrows. Don't be fooled, this scorpion is busy hunting, even though it doesn't seem to be moving at all. It is instantly alerted to any victim like this larva that foolishly ventures too close. The scorpion is equipped with all sorts of detection devices that are pure marvels of sensitivity and precision. These little hairs on its pincers can sense the slightest movement in the air around it, even the flutter of a butterfly wing. The scorpion's legs are equipped with organs sensitive enough to detect the low frequencies produced by an insect moving along the ground. Each leg becomes a radar device pointing in a different direction. Together, they sweep a 360 degree radius around the scorpion. As soon as its prey appears, the hunter turns towards it to detect the high-frequency vibrations of the approaching insect. Guided by this infallible system, the scorpion's pincers never miss their target. In general, scorpions do not waste their venom. They sting only when their prey is too strong to overwhelm them using only their pincers. Overnight, the wind has died down. The horizon is no longer blotted out by clouds of dust and sand blown up by the storm. What a treat to finally see the beautiful scenery all around us. Mr. Abdul is waiting for me on a dune not far from our camp. He believes that a scorpion hunter needs much stronger protection than a mere talisman. I'm going to take part in a ritual that Abdul learned from his father. The ceremony begins with a confrontation. The scorpion is sprinkled with catron anti-scorpion potion prepared from a selection of plants. The healer blows on the scorpion and orders it 
to surrender. He orders the Scorpion and all its brothers not to stain me. Abdul's magic also transfers part of the Scorpion's power directly to me. And I am sure going to need it because now I am off to dig up some Scorpion burrows. I'm going to test my new powers in the Larada, a section of the desert with scatterings of dirt mounds and shrubs. This is an ideal habitat for our scorpion friend. Many scorpions spend almost 95% of their life deep in their burrow. I don't blame them. The surface temperature of the sand can reach 150 degree Fahrenheit. Whereas at three inches underground, it might be a comfortable 80 degree Fahrenheit. When it comes to humidity, it's even better indoors. When it is 5% at the surface, it can be as much as 70% eight inches down. We can recognize a scorpion burrow by the shape of the entrance. As you can see, the oval-shaped opening allows the animal to penetrate the ground without having its pinchers in the way. Scorpions put a lot of energy into excavating their burrow. Some species move up to 400 times their weight in dirt. I hope I don't have to work that hard. The burrows are generally six to eight inches deep, although some can be three feet deep. The scorpion often digs a spiral tunnel, which helps keep the temperature and humidity stable. There it is. There it is. As you can see, burrowing scorpions are large, big, venturing. Some species weigh only a fifth of an ounce, but can pick up a weight of 200 times that with one pincer. Their short legs and strong mud parts are ideal tools for digging and maintaining their precious burrow. These scorpions almost never leave their hiding place. They just wait until supper arrives and then simply seize it in their powerful pincer. We might be right in the middle of the desert, but I have no complaints about my hotel under the stars. We're almost as comfortable in our tent as the scorpion is in its burrow. Especially since Mr. Abdul is such a great cook. Since the beginning of time, Desert people have tried to make the best possible use of the animals they raise and the plants they grow around their oasis. Scorpions, too, are grateful for any food the desert offers. These dauntless hunters aren't so fussy about their food. 
Everything that falls into the clutches becomes a meal. Scorpions eat about 35,000 insects a year. The prey is chopped up by the mud parts and the pieces are sprayed with digestive juices even before the scorpion puts them into its mouth. This makes for more efficient digestion and enables the scorpion to consume large quantities of food at a time. Some hard-shelled beetles, like this one, are of no interest to scorpions. That kind of meal would be hard to handle, even with two pincers. By a strange coincidence, scorpions are predators of other scorpions. Cannibalism is frequent, even between individuals of the same species. In these confrontations, it is usually the smaller individual that loses. Scorpions are naturally immune to scorpion venom, but a stronger attacker will turn its victim over on its back and sting it in the main nervous system, causing instant death. What a mistake. In the desert, you should never leave your boots outside for the night. Why? Come and see. Scorpions just like to hide in them. Which scorpion would you say is the most dangerous? This little one from Morocco or this large one from South Africa? Have a look. This one is not aggressive at all. And its sting is similar to the sting of a wasp. However, this little scorpion is considered as the most dangerous scorpion on earth, and its stings could be fatal. So, a scorpion's size has nothing to do with how much damage it can inflict. The only way to know for sure, and even then there are exceptions, is the size of its pincers. A scorpion with strong, thick pincers can master its prey without having to waste energy stinging it. So the venom of these species is usually not very toxic. But species with thin little pincers can't count on these alone to subdue their prey. So, they have a very powerful and often very dangerous venom. But the sting of 98% of scorpion species causes no more harm to humans than a common bee or wasp sting. 
Of the 1,400 or so species of scorpions, only 25 have venom toxic enough to kill a human. They are all members of the Butidae family, which certainly takes the prize for deadly stings. It takes less than a very small drop of the venom of one of these nasty little creatures to kill 50 mice. In general, the drier the surroundings, the more concentrated the venom. There is Androctonus mauritanicus, which has the annoying habit of sneaking into houses. Androctonus amoruxi, a dead ringer for its deadly cousin Australis, the one I found in my boot. Butus occitanus, which is unfortunately one of Morocco's most common scorpions. And Butotus franzwerneri, recognizable by its thin, very hairy tail. Scorpion venom is a sinister cocktail of toxic substances, some of which are 100,000 times more deadly than cyanide. So caution is the watchword, especially since I am planning a little night hunting. Most scorpions are active only at night. Their eyes, located on the top of their body, are only good for distinguishing between night and day. We have also discovered that scorpions can detect the presence of light by a mysterious system located on their tail. But there's something even more extraordinary. On each side of the prototorax, there are more eyes smaller, but unbelievably keen. The scorpion can see rocks and other obstacles, even if they are lit only by dim starlight. These eyes are so sensitive, they can literally be blinded by the bright light of the full moon. Because of their nocturnal habits, very little was known about how scorpions live. Then, a great invention came along. A mysterious substance secreted by their carapace makes scorpions appear phosphorescent when we shine an ultraviolet light on them. This light does not bother the scorpion's eyes. This means entomologists can see them from over 15 yards away and observe them at their leisure without frightening them away with strong lights. Researchers can easily pick up the scorpions with tweezers whose tips have been dipped in fluorescent paint. We can even mark certain specimens with fluorescent markers and then let them go so we can observe them night after night. Why did Allah create scorpions? I'm strongly tempted to guess it was just to make us scratch our heads in wonder. For here is a living enigma that can go for a whole year without eating or drinking, remain underwater for weeks without drowning, and leave a fossil that is still phosphorescent millions of years later. Even in his wildest dreams, Mr. Abdul will not be able to perform magic like that, the magic of Scorpio.